right, so quiz tomorrow is 9.1 through 9.3. Let's start with 9.1. So let's do question number two. So we have to know SOHCAHTOA to evaluate our six trig functions. We also have to know all three sides of our triangle. So we're given two. How can I find the third side? Awesome. Pythagorean theorem. So 4 squared plus, we can say b squared equals 8 squared. Why did I put the 8 on the other side of the equal to sign? Because it's the hypotenuse. So it has to be equal to the hypotenuse. So we have 16 plus b squared equals 64. Subtract 16 on both sides. So b squared is equal to 48. Take the square root. Can I simplify the square root of 48? What are two factors of 48? Eight and six. Yes, you can use a calculator for tomorrow, but you can't leave this as a decimal. You have to simplify it. Two factors of eight are four and two. Six would be two and three. So I'm circling what? Two groups of two. So what comes to the outside? 2 times 2, which would be 4. What has to stay on the inside? 3. So B would be 4 square root 3. Now it helps to label everything. So theta is down here. So what would opposite be? 4. Perfect. So I'm going to label this as my opposite. What's our adjacent? 4 square root 3. And what's the hypotenuse? 8. So let's find our six trig function, starting with sine. Sine would be what over what? Opposite over hypotenuse, so 4 over 8. Can this be simplified to what? 1 over 2. Perfect. Now we have cosine. Cosine is what over what? Adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be 4 square root 3 over 8. Can this be simplified? The 4 and the 8, so it simplifies to what? 1 square, 1 square root 3. So square root 3 over 2. You don't need the coefficient of 1 outside. Just be square root 3 over 2, because we can divide these two by 4. And then we have tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that would be what? 4 over 4 square root 3. So when we simplify, we get 1 over square root 3. Could I leave my answer like this? No. What do I have to do? I have to rationalize. So I multiply the top and the bottom by square root 3. So we get square root 3 over 3. Now let's find our reciprocal functions. So which is the reciprocal of sine? Cosecant. So cosecant, we just flip sine. You can flip the original, 4 over 8, or you can flip the simplified one. I would just flip the simplified one here. So that would be 2 over 1, which is just 2. What's the reciprocal of cosine? Secant. So I'm going to flip the simplified one, so that would be 2 over square root 3. Can I leave my answer like this? No, what do I have to do? rationalize. So multiply the top and the bottom by square root 3. We get 2 square root 3 over 3. And then lastly we have cotangent. So I'm going to flip the one before I rationalized. That way I don't have to rationalize again. So I'm going to flip that 1 over square root 3 to make it square root 3 over 1 or just square root 3. So these would be our six trick functions. Make sure they are simplified as much as you can, and then don't leave a square root in the denominator. You have to rationalize. On the quiz, it may only ask for like three of them. 
So it'll say find these three trig functions. So it's super helpful to know that sine goes with cosecant, cosine goes with secant. So if it just asks you, let's say the question only asks for secant, you may just want to find cosine first and then flip it. So not only does it help to know Sokotoa, but just know that cosecant goes with sine. Secant goes with cosine and cotangent goes with tangent. All right, let's do number four. So it gives us sine of theta is equal to four over 11. Sine is what over what? Opposite over hypotenuse. So you can draw the triangle if you want, but what am I missing? Adjacent. So when I'm missing one of the sides, how would I find that? And what's my C squared here? 11, because that's my hypotenuse. So I could say 4 squared plus B squared equals 11 squared. So 16 plus B squared equals 121. Subtract 16 on both sides. So B squared is 105. Take the square root. So B is the square root of 105. So square root 105 is my adjacent. Because that was the one that was missing. Try to simplify if you can. I think our two factors of 105 would be 5 and 20, 21. And two factors of 21 would be 3 and 7. Do I have any pairs here? No, so we can't simplify. So just leave it as the square root of 105. Now let's five our, find our five remaining trig functions. So we have sine, we need cosine, and tangent, and then our reciprocal ones, we have cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So what would cosine be? So adjacent over hypotenuse, so katoa. So cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse, so square root 105 over 11. What would tangent be? Opposite over adjacent, so 4 over square root 105. Can I leave my answer like this? Nope, we have to rationalize. Multiply the top and the bottom by square root 105. We get 4 square root 105 over 105. So this is our tangent. What's cosecant? 11 over 4, perfect. We just flip sine, so 11 over 4. What's secant? 11 over square root 105. Could I leave my answer like this? Nope, we gotta rationalize. Multiply the top and the bottom by square root 105. We get 11 root 105 over 105. And then what would cotangent be? Square root 105 over four, perfect. We just flip. The tangent. So I want to practice one that is your special right triangles. So our special right triangles are the 30, 60, 90 and 45, 45, 90. So let's look at 30, 60, 90 first. What is opposite of the 30 degrees? Anybody remember? So opposite of 30 is where we start. Start with the smallest angle. So that is just A. That's where we start, so A. Opposite of the 60 would be what? A times square root 3. 
and then opposite of the 90 is 2a. And then in a 45, 45, 90, what are opposite of the 45s? A, and then opposite of the right angle, our hypotenuse is A square root two. So you have to know these to begin. So if I had a triangle here and it gave me, let's say the hypotenuse was 10 and this one is 30. And we're asked to find X. How would I find X? We want to start by labeling everything. What's opposite of the 30? A. What's opposite of the 90? 2A. So I start with the formula that I'm given, the little equation here where I can solve. How would I solve for A here? Divide by 2. So A is equal to? Five. So we just take that, plug it into A. So what is X equal? Five. Let's do one more. So let's do a forty-five, forty-five, ninety now. And let's say this is x, and this would be, we'll make it 12. Where do I start? Label everything. So what's opposite of the 90? a square root 2. What's opposite of the 45s? So we want to solve to figure out what A is. How could I find what A is? So I'm using this one. How do I solve for A? Divide by square root 2. So A is equal to 12 over square root 2. Can I leave it like this? What do I have to do? rationalize, so multiply the top and the bottom by square root 2. So we get 12 square root 2 over 2. Just for fun, we need to simplify this a little bit more. How can we simplify? 2 goes into 12, so it's 6 square root 2. So a is 6 square root 2, so I'm going to take that, plug it into a, so what is x equal? 6 square root 2. So don't forget to know your special right triangles for the quiz tomorrow. So I'm going to do 7 through 9. We're going to graph them or draw the angle. So we have to match for these. So how can I draw 500 degrees? Why would we subtract 360? Because it's over more than just one time around the circle. So I'm going to subtract 360 to find out how much more I have to go around the circle after I go one time. So 500 minus 360 would be 140. So I have to go 140 degrees more. Well, this is 90 degrees, 180, 270, 360. So which quadrant would I end up in? In quadrant two, somewhere in between 90 and 180. So we're going to be in here. So you have to show that you went around the circle one time and 140 degrees more. So that matches B. Let's do eight. So for number eight, I can't really tell how much 7 pi over 3 is. So what could I do? Awesome. Let's convert it to degrees. So we're going to multiply by 180 over pi. The pi's cancel. And 3 goes into 180 60 times. 
So I'm left with 7 times 60, which would be what? 420. So 420 degrees is more than one time around the circle. So I'm going to go around once. How much more do I need to go? How can I find that? Subtract 360, just like we did in the last one. So when we subtract 360, we get 60. So I would go 60 degrees more. So if my first quadrant's 0 to 90, I'm going to be somewhere in the first quadrant there. So that would match A. Any questions on that one? All right, let's do 9 also. So we have negative 130. So negative just means I'm going to go in the opposite direction. Instead of going up, we start by going down. Now, if you want to, I would change the direction of your degrees. So make it negative 90, negative 180 negative 270. So where would I end up? In the third quadrant, in the bottom left, in between negative 90 and negative 180. I'd end up about there. So we're just going down, but the degrees change because now you're just going in the opposite direction. So I would just change each axis in reverse. Make them negative, but instead of from here, here to here, being 0 to 90, it's now 0 to negative 90, going in the opposite direction. So that would match C. Right. For the next part, we have to find one positive angle and one negative angle that are coterminal. What do I need to do to find a positive coterminal angle? Add 360. We get 435 degrees for a positive coterminal angle. How do I find a negative one? Minus 360. So always start with the angle that's given and then subtract 360. So this would be negative 285. Agreed? So let's say we were given something to start with that was like, 400 degrees and said find a negative coterminal angle. What would we do? Subtract 360. So we would get 40. Is 40 a negative coterminal angle? No. How do I find a negative one? Keep subtracting 360. So you can either keep adding 360 or keep subtracting 360 until you find a positive or negative. So this would be negative 320. So that would be our coterminal angle. 40 would work as a positive one. So that's also a coterminal angle, but just to find a negative one, you would just have to keep doing it. So you can add or subtract 360 however many times you want. Great. For 13 through 18, we're converting the degree measure to radians or the radian to degrees. So let's do 15. What do I need to multiply to convert? Pi over 180 to convert to radians. So we can simplify this by canceling out the zeros. And then what number goes into both 16 and 18? 2. So we can divide them both by 2. When we take out a 2, we're left with negative 8 and 9. So this would be negative 8 pi over 9. Can we simplify it anymore? Nope. So we're done there. What about for 18? What do I need to multiply to convert to degrees? 180 over pi. So the pi's cancel. What number goes into both 8 and 180? 4. 4 definitely does, so we are left with 2. And 45. So here it would be negative 45 over 2. Or you could say what? <coughs> Negative 22.5. Either way would work. You could leave it as a fraction if you want. 
but just make sure you put the degree sign when you're talking about degrees. All right, with the last page, let's do, let's do number three. Actually, we'll do two. So to make our triangle here, we start at the point and go where? To the x-axis. So either you draw a straight line down or a straight line up. You never go sideways. Now we want to label our sides. What number goes on the x-axis? Negative 4, because that's our x value. What number goes up and down? 1. The y value. How do I find the missing side? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. What would my C squared have to be here? The hypotenuse, the missing side. So I have 1 squared plus negative 4 squared is equal to, you can call it H squared or C squared, whatever you want. So 1 plus 16 is equal to our hypotenuse squared. Take the square root. So our hypotenuse is the square root of 17. Now, where's our theta? In the middle. It comes from the center. So this angle here would be my theta. So 1, is that opposite or adjacent? Opposite. It's in the opposite side of the triangle as the theta. So that would make 4 what? Negative 4 what? Adjacent. So I would always label everything and then plug it all in. You still have to know your SOHCAHTOA. This is just like the examples we did in 9.1 now. So let's start with sine. What would our sine be? Which is? 1 over square root 17. When we rationalize this, because we can't leave the square root on the bottom, we get square root 17 over 17. What would cosine be? Negative 4 over square root 17. Still have to rationalize this, so we get negative 4 square root 17 over 17. And what's tangent? 1 over negative 4. Let's find our reciprocal functions. Which trig function goes with sine? Cosecant, CSC. So I'm going to flip the original. That way I don't have to rationalize it again. So we get square root 17 over 1, or just square root 17. Which trig function goes with cosine? Secant. So again, I'm going to flip the original. So square root 17 over negative 4. And then lastly, we have cotangent. What would cotangent be? Negative 4. Or negative 4 over 1, which is just negative 4. So here we have our six trig functions. Sine and cosine would actually be these two. Oops. These two. The rationalized ones. So for 5 through 7, when we use the unit circle to evaluate our six trig functions, we have to know that sine goes with which one, x or y? Sine is with y, cosine is x, and tangent, y over x. And then our reciprocal functions are just the flip of it. So let's do number 6. So we need to find 450 degrees. Looking at our unit circle, do we see 450 degrees on this? Y over X. Do we see 450 degrees? No. But what do you think I would need to do to find out where 450 degrees is? Subtract 360. We want to find the positive coterminal angle to it. So if you are given a negative degree, or negative radian, you just want to find the positive coterminal angle. So we're going to subtract 360 from, what was it, 450. So when we subtract 360, we're left with 90. Is 90 degrees on my circle? Yes. 
So we're looking at 90 degrees. What's the point at 90 degrees? 0, 1. So I'm using the point 0, 1. So let's start with sine. Sine, we said, is which? X or Y? Y. So sine would be 1. Cosine is X, so what would cosine be? 0. Tangent is y over x, so 1 over 0. What happens when we get 0 in the bottom? It's undefined. If 0 is in the bottom of your fraction, it is undefined. Next, let's find our reciprocal one. So we have cosecant. Instead of sine being y, this would now be 1 over y. So 1 over 1 is 1. Then secant would be 1 over x. So 1 over 0 would be undefined. When 0 is on the bottom, it is undefined. And then cotangent, we flip tangent. So that would be 0 over 1. What happens when 0 is on the top? Zero. So these would be our six trig functions. So let's look at seven. So seven, we want to see if we can find three pi over two on our unit circle. So we go to our unit circle, three pi over two is down here. So what's the point at three pi over two? Zero comma negative one. So the point we're looking at is 0, comma, negative 1. So 0 would be our x, and negative 1 is our y. So for sine, what would sine of theta be? Negative 1, it's our y. Cosine would be what? 0, that's our x. Tangent is y over x, so what would that be? Negative 1 over 0, which is? undefined. Sine goes with cosecant. So what would cosecant be? 1 over negative 1, which simplifies to negative 1. Cosine goes with secant. So what would cosecant be? 1 over 0, which is undefined. And tangent goes with cotangent. So instead of being negative 1 over 0, it would be 0 over negative 1, which is 0. All right, lastly, we have reference angles. So find the angle's reference angle. Let's start with, we'll do eight. So for number eight, if you're given a negative angle, find the positive coterminal angle. That way you can use one of your formulas here. So what is the positive coterminal angle? How do I find it? Add 360. What do we get when we add 360? 190. So what quadrant would 190 be in? So if this is 180, we got to go a little bit more than 180. So it's in the third quadrant. In quadrant three, if we're over here, I use theta minus 180. So I'm using 190 minus 180. What's 190 minus 180? 10. So for number eight, my reference angle, we call it theta prime, would be 10 what? Degrees. We do theta minus 190. Theta minus 180, and theta is 190. So 190 minus 180 is 10. And like we said yesterday, what are two things that theta, that your reference angle always has to be? Positive and acute. Acute meaning that it's less than 90. But I'll make one up. Let's say I'll make a number 14.
let's say we were given something like 400 degrees. What would I need to do first? Subtract 360 because it's more than one time around. So I want to figure out where it is exactly. So I know I go more than one, but I want to find how much more. So when I subtract 360, what am I left with? 40 degrees. So I'm going 40 degrees more. So what quadrant am I in? The first. So what is my reference angle in the first quadrant? It would be 40. Because it's the same thing. So in the first quadrant, you don't have to use the formula or anything. It's the same thing that you start with, but you just have to subtract the 360. Let's do 11. So for 17 pi over 6, I have no idea what quadrant that's in. So how can I figure it out? Multiply by 180 over pi. I want to convert it to 2 degrees so I can see where I'm at. So the pi's cancel. 6 goes into 180 how many times? 30. So here I'm multiplying 17 times 30. I'm going to multiply 17 times 3 and then just add a 0 at the end. But you guys can use your calculators tomorrow, so just start in the calculator. 7 times 3 would be 21. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2. So it would be 510 degrees. So 510 degrees is more than one time around the unit circle. More than one time around. How can I find out how much more I have to go? Subtract 360. So when I subtract 360, what am I left with? 150. So I go another 150 degrees around. So that would put me in what quadrant? The second quadrant, somewhere in between 90 and 180. So what formula do I use in the second quadrant? 180 minus theta, so this would be 180 minus 150, which is 30. So my reference angle is 30 degrees. Can I leave my reference angle in degrees? No, because my question gave me radians. So because this is in radians, my answer has to be in radians. So what would I do to convert it back to radians? Multiply by pi over 180. Simplify if you can. So the zeros cancel. 3 goes into 18 six times. So this would be pi over 6.